Today, as I often do, I want to tell you a tale from a time when the world was reeling, an era of a bombardment of the senses, a time when our world came crashing down around us literally, and it felt as if everything had been laid bare. Sound familiar? Well, it should. Not just because that's how I started my journey with Buddha in previous episodes, but because, like any epic tale, it's one of sorrow, suffering, pain, injustice, and also, of course, enlightenment, ultimately. This sounds like an apt tale for the time in which we live now, the age of the pandemic and COVID. But, of course, I'm looking back today at an old scar. One that may never heal, in fact, certainly for any of those that survived or any of us New Yorkers. Now, more than a generation later, we look at the events of September 11th, not so much to relive them, but to understand the lessons that we were provided and maybe learned, or have we? The one thing you hear from everyone at the start of their own 9-11 story is how beautiful the morning was that day. The sky was clear and blue, with small puffy white clouds, and the air was fresh. A perfect late summer or early fall day. It's the kind of day that gives one a sense of clarity of vision or determination that this was going to be the day, the week, the year. In the case of my own story, well, I was less than a month out in terms of starting my first ever feature film, Funny Valentine, which I was not only directing, I was producing, and I wrote. And in many ways, I knew that this was going to be a year like none other. Little did I know. I'm Jeff Oppenheim, inviting you to join me for a very special Tomorrow's Journey. Never Forget is, of course, the charge of the day when all the names are read out loud of those that we lost memorialized here in the plaza as they are commemorated in these two beautiful fountains. But is it only from the lessons drawn from those that we lost? Or can we also be learning from the living? As a filmmaker, I've had the dubious privilege of interviewing a lot of the first responders that day. And two come to mind in particular, solid stoic fellas, EMT drivers. They drove their ambulance into a war zone that day, rescued as many people as they could fit on their bus, brought them to safety, and did the unthinkable. They drove back in again, and again, and again. To hear them tell of what that day was like and watch them get shaken to the core, they will never forget. But offer them the moniker of hero, and they will tell you, no, we were just doing our job that day. We were doing what anyone would, helping the community. I spoke to and actually know a couple of the doctors that stood on call that day, waiting for the many victims that never came. One, though, in particular, is credited to this day with saving one of the first victims found. He is credited with saving her life, but ask him if he is a hero, and he'll tell you no. I just did what anyone would do that had my training, my skill set. Ask him if he'll ever forget, and to this day he'll tell you no. He will always remember. Now my own story pales in comparison, certainly, but I remember as soon as I could see down Broadway, the plume of smoke, and as soon as we put it all together, I ran the 2.5 miles from my office to my children's school, picked them up, and brought them the next mile home to our house, to safety. About three days in, though, I grew so restless that I knew I had to do something. So with apologies, I grabbed an old fireman's hat that I had from a previous shoot, and pushed my way down past every checkpoint with nothing more than an old press pass and I guess a gift for the gab. I got myself down to Chambers Street and West Broadway, just blocks from ground zero. And I stood there. I stood there with hundreds of others, like me, all there, 
some from New York City in the area, some had already come from upstate and other places. They had gotten themselves here and stood ready, willing, and able to help in any way that they could, to serve the community any way they could, not to be heroes, to be helpers. We shall never forget. Then, like now, I'm reminded as I move about the city, we stopped back then. We checked in with each other, lingered a little bit longer, met each other's eyes, which sometimes people think in New York we don't do much of. We held the door, we extended courtesy, we extended care, even if in small but perceivable ways. We were looking out for each other. And what's more is we all got back to work. We got our hands into whatever it was we were doing, even if we weren't EMT workers or doctors or other, some technically needed skill, we started building back even the tower itself. And even in small ways, storytelling and filmmaking, I got back to work too. And in doing that, was able to start to put my industry back to work. In my case, I was able to make my feature film debut after all, though it was delayed till December. We worked with the Mayor's Office of Film and Television. We followed their protocol, abided by full safety recommendations, and were allowed to get back into production. We even became the first film to shoot in New York City post 9-11 in a still shuttered town. One of the sites was this building here, which we were actually able to use as two different locations. It stands just a few blocks from the epicenter that was known as Ground Zero. Because of that, before we could even begin production, my crew had to arrive in advance and begin to clear away the rubble, both literally and figuratively, in order for us to start our filming. In fact, one of my crew members came to me at the end of the day to tell me well, she had almost not come to work that day because she just didn't think she could take it. The emotional impact on us all was a bit hard, but she said she was glad she did come in because we started the day with a therapy scene and ended it with a big wedding scene, which many of the crew actually got to participate in, dancing in the background. She was one of them, and she said it healed her. It brought us not only back to work, but doing what we do best, making movie magic. Just as I helped put the city back to work back then, I have carried forth during these present times, the pandemic, with these broadcasts, doing what I do best, filmmaking and storytelling, to offer lessons, observations learned. And as I recall, the original 9-11 day, and as we commemorate, those that we lost. We also must commemorate those that are still among the living and honor their valor and their commitment with a very simple give back to the community. Mask up despite your discomfort. Vax up despite how you feel about medicines and vaccines. It's a way to stand in service and in unity and that's what we're celebrating on this day, isn't it? For many of us New Yorkers, we will forever remember where we were that day in September, and we will remember the effect it had on us. I've had a chance to talk to many survivors, and they all say the same thing. We will never forget. We can't. It's part of who we are. But they also share something else in common, in that they hope and wish to move on move forward, get on with their lives, but with greater consciousness out of everything that they went through and learned that day. And in that, I think is the ultimate ability to commemorate not just those that we've had to say farewell to, but to those among the living, still with us, those of us in the community. As I travel forward on my own eightfold path with my journey is with Buddha, as you might have seen, I encourage all of you to find the same pathway towards community, working together, striving together, not just for a better New York, but for a better world. I'm Jeff Oppenheim. Stay safe, stay well, and stay connected as community.